Hello and welcome. In CFD, post processing is a term which describes all the ways to interact with and examine the simulation results. Post processing is done from the results tab in Ansys Fluent and it is typically the last step in the CFD workflow. In this demo lesson, we will present a brief overview of using the results tab of the Ansys Fluent for both qualitative and quantitative post processing using the heat sink geometry. Sounds interesting, right? Let's get started. Before we get into our simulation, let us get a clear idea of the problem being solved. Here we have a geometry of a generic 3D heatsink with 5 fins made up of aluminium. The base of the heatsink is maintained at a constant temperature of 300 Kelvin. The model is assumed to be symmetric. Air at 290 Kelvin enters the domain with a velocity of 3 meter per second through the inlet. The boundary conditions used are as shown here. The goal of the simulation is to calculate the heat transfer through the fins of the heat sink using 3D steady state simulation. Let us now launch ANSYS Fluent in solution mode. Go to File, Read, Select Mesh and pick the mesh file. After the mesh file is loaded, using the usual way of performing simulation using the ribbon from left to right manner, I will first go into the domain tab and perform the mesh check. As you can see, there are no error messages displayed in the console and we can now proceed to the next tab which is the physics tab. In the solver group, I will set the temperature in reference value to 290 Kelvin. Rest I will keep the defaults which is a usual practice for most cases. In the models group, I need to tick energy so that ANSYS Fluent will solve the energy equation and calculate the temperatures. I can see that viscous is in blue, indicating that a turbulence model is active which is the default setting. Because this is a turbulent flow, no changes are required in the models tab as the default viscous model is the SST K omega turbulence model which is appropriate for our purpose. Next, we will move to the materials group. Since air is our working fluid and the fin material is aluminium, we do not have to make any modifications in the materials group and the cell zone tab as air and aluminium are the default materials in ANSYS Fluent for fluid and solid zone respectively. Let us now move ahead and click boundaries. I prefer to group them in zone type view as it is more convenient to navigate through. First, I will left click on inlet, ensure that it's the velocity inlet boundary and click on edit. I want the inlet velocity to be 3 meter per second. In the thermal section, I will put the temperature at 290 Kelvin. Then for sim air and sim solid, I will use the symmetry boundary condition. Going to the outlet, it should be the pressure outlet boundary with a zero pascal gauge pressure. Let's see the wall boundaries. When we speak of the base wall of the heat sink in this case, we need it as a heat source. So I will go to edit and enter the value of temperature as 300 Kelvin. I will leave all other walls at the default no slip boundary condition. Now that we have successfully defined materials, cell zones and boundary conditions, we will now move to the next tab which is the solution tab. Here the default settings in the methods and controls groups are appropriate for our need and we do not have to make any changes. We will now move to the reports group. I want to define two reports definition for monitoring convergence. I will start by defining a force report. When the panel opens, I am going to choose drag and enter a meaningful name. Now, I will switch to drag force from drag coefficient and choose wall sink air from zones. When writing force report, it is important to choose the right force vector. I will modify the direction here to positive z since drag force is in line with the main flow direction which is along the z direction. I will check the report plot and report file checkbox before clicking OK. 
For the next report definition, I will go to surface report and then choose mass weighted average. I will name this as outlet temp report. The variable will be temperature and the surface will be outlet. Rest of the settings are the same as the previous report definition. Now I will initialize the solution using hybrid initialization. Before running the simulation, I will save the initial case and data file. Go to file, write case and data and save the file. In the run calculation group, set the number of iterations to 200 and click on calculate to initiate the solution calculation. You can see that the solution is complete and converged. Now I will move to the next tab that is the results tab which is all about post processing the results. While post processing, I would like to check first mass and energy balances to further ensure a satisfactory convergence of the problem which can be done through the fluxes option located under the reports group. I will begin with the mass flow rate. For that, I will select the inlet and the outlet boundaries, then click compute. The signs shown here convey the direction of mass flow. The mass entering the domain is represented by positive sign and vice versa. The sum of these values must be as close to zero as possible to satisfy conservation of mass. In net results, you can see that the sum, which is in fact a negligible small value, represents a good mass balance in the numerical simulation. To check the energy balance, I will change the report to total heat transfer and select inlet, outlet and the walls which are involved in heat transfer. Now after computing it, you can observe the net results to be negligible again. This means that we have a good energy balance in our case. Both these checks provide additional confidence on the convergence of our simulation. Let us now conduct some quantitative post-processing to understand the solution results. I will start by using the surface integral panel. This panel has many different report types and is similar in function to the panel for surface report definition. The pressure drop is a significant quantity of interest in many CFD solutions. So if I return to the previous panel and choose area weighted average with static pressure as the variable, I may click the input and output under surfaces and compute. Here, the figure given in the panel is the average value across all chosen surfaces. However, what is frequently fascinating and helpful is that if you go to the console window, you can see that it also shows the values for each individual surface. If you want to know the difference in pressure between an inlet and an outlet, you can often just select the inlet in the panel and as long as you are using the default zero pressure at the outlet, the result will be the pressure drop. Since the pressure drop is simply the inlet pressure less the outlet pressure, you can take the advantage of the fact that this is typically the case. Now I will create two line surfaces for plotting solution data. Go to create line slash rake and create lines for these endpoints. I will enter these manually and create two lines, line one and line two respectively as shown. Next, I will create a mesh display object. For this one, I just want to include the walls and I will just click save slash display. You will notice when I did that the object appears in the tree and as you keep working, all the objects you create will be accessible from the tree. Now to display the lines with mesh, right click on mesh graphics which we have created previously in outline view and click display. 
Now drag the line 1 and line 2 from surfaces in outline view to the graphics window. This will help in visualizing the lines in a better manner. Going to the plots group, there is an option referred to as XY plot. Here I want to create a temperature graph along the line 2 that we have created above to examine how temperature fluctuates across the model. In order to do this, I will click XY plot new and choose line 2 from surfaces. Choose the y axis function for temperature and x axis function for the direction vector. I will enter values for plot direction as 0, 0, 1 for the temperature fluctuation in the z direction along a line and click save plot. This displays the plot of temperature variation over the line. At the point where the line contacts the heat sink, there is a quick rise in temperature. Additionally, a steady increase in temperature can be detected when the line is in touch with the heat sink. Furthermore, as soon as the contact with the heat sink is gone, you can see the temperature falling down due to heat dissipation in air as a result of convection. Now I will move on to the flow visualization or qualitative post processing. I will start by creating another mesh display object that includes only the walls of the computational model. I will just click save slash display to display the mesh object. Let's analyze the velocity and the temperature gradient qualitatively with the help of contours. To start with, I will create the contours on a plane passing through the heat sink. For this, I will first need to create a plane using a create plane option in the surface group. It will be a YZ plane. You can see how I am going to drag the plane in its normal direction by dragging this arrow. I will drag it until it comes in the heat sink region. Now as we have the plane at desired location, I will name it as YZ plane and click create. Now in contours new, select the plane and create a contour for velocity by selecting the velocity in contours of drop down menu and click save slash display. Look in graphics window and you will see how the velocity contours look like. Follow the same procedure for temperature contour. For this, I will select temperature from contours of drop down menu and static temperature from sub menu. This will display a contour of temperature. In this contour, you can see how the heat dissipates due to the forced convection. Let's move to another option which is path lines. This option helps in visualizing the paths of the fluid flow by setting a surface as a starting point. I will create a new path line graphics which I would like to be released from line 1. Also, I would like them to be colored by static temperature so I will select temperature from color by drop down menu. Click on save slash display and you can now see the path lines emerging from line 1 surface. In path lines window, we also have pulse option for an animated visualization of the path lines. I will select continuous mode in pulse mode and click on pulse so you can see how the animation looks like. To stop animation, click on stop. We will save this path lines graphics as path lines 1. Similarly, we can create path lines 2 emerging from the inlet surface by selecting inlet as our release surface and you can see how it looks. Another option is the vectors which is used to visualize the vector quantities on the selected surfaces. For now, let's create a vector graphics on YZ plane. Click on Vectors New. I will create vectors for velocity and color them by velocity magnitude. I will select YZ plane from surfaces and click on Save slash Display. Here in the Vectors window, we have options for choosing style of vectors and also we can scale them according to our convenience. Let's try scaling them by factor 2. See how the size of arrows increases in graphics window. 
There is another interesting option provided by Ansys Fluent here in Outline View, which is Scene. Here we can create a scene of multiple existing graphics as per our convenience. Right click on Scene and select New and Scene window will open. You can observe that the various graphics objects are presented in the window in checklist format so that you can select whatever you want. For now, I will select temperature contour, vector, mesh and path lines that we have created previously. We can also adjust the transparency of objects using the slider here. Let's make our mesh 50% transparent. Name the scene as scene 1 and click on save and display. Now you can see in graphics window how I created the scene which I wanted with a transparent mesh. Now I would like to save the solution data and all the post processing that we have done and for that I will go to file, write and select case and data to save the case and data files. That brings us to the end of this tutorial. Let's summarize what we learned in this tutorial. We began with a quick description of the problem that we are using in this tutorial which is the airflow over a heatsink geometry. Then we quickly performed the setup and computed the solution for this problem. After that, we discuss how to post process the results of the simulation using the results tab. In that, we first discussed about the reports group and after creating required line surfaces, we created XY plot to plot the temperature distribution along the line passing through the fluid domain and the heat sink. We then learned how to create plane surfaces and plot contours, vectors and path lines using graphics group. We also learned how to overlay multiple graphics object to create a scene. With that, let's wrap up the lesson.